Hey guys, this video is brought to you by World of Warships. It's a free-to-play PC game, and it offers the perfect balance of action and strategy. You can command a naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels, including the USS Indianapolis, and you can unlock ships and dominate the ocean. You can even invite your friends to join you and receive unique items and cashback bonuses. If you guys check out that promo code at the bottom of the screen, Battle Stations 2020, you can get 250 doubloons, three days premium account, a million credits, and one premium ship, which is the USS Charleston, plus you get one port slot. This game has great reviews from multiple sources. Be sure to click on the link in the description tab below to start playing today. Hey guys, what up, good evening. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to stay motivated as a programmer. It's something that a lot of you guys have asked me about. And honestly, tonight is one of those nights where like I have a schedule that I have to keep. I have kids, I gotta make dinner, I gotta work, I got uh, to commute. It's been a long day and like I have people waiting on even this video here. So it's like, I did not feel like doing it, but um, I basically just pushed my way through and I'm like, you know, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and talk about this on a day that I don't really feel all that motivated. Let's go ahead and jump into this. I'm not gonna really waste your time with proper eating, sleeping and exercise. I mean, a lot of you guys are smart enough if you're gonna be coders and things, you, you obviously know you eat shit food, you feel like shit, you know, you drink too much alcohol, you're going to feel like shit, you do drugs and things, you're going to uh, feel like shit. So obviously you shouldn't do that stuff. So exercise and all that is, is really important. Um, also, you know, spending time with family and friends, that's pretty important as well, especially uh, you really need that social connection. I think it's really unhealthy for the amount of um, the amount of time that pr that employers are expecting us to be behind our desks um, in our own free free time and things just uh, learning the latest framework and things that, that benefits the company. So one of the things that sucks about life is that we only have 24 hours in a day and we only have however long we have to live. We have no idea how long that's going to be. We can get run over by a bus tomorrow. Um, we could have a heart attack at, at the age of like 45. Like You don't know. Uh, we just have no idea. And there's only 24 hours in a day. So we're always competing with, okay, what kind of time? Like, what am I going to have to remove from my life in order to spend the proper amount of time coding and programming and I don't have any advice on this one except for the fact that like you do want to focus on making sure that you're spending your time wisely. So going through this list here, I think that um, you know time is, is very key. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about that. One of the biggest things about not wasting time is stopping on a good note. So in order to stay motivated for the next day of coding, uh, or even if you're taking a few hours break and you're going to do something later on that day, one of the best ways I think to stay motivated to continue to, to go back at it is stopping on a positive note. And that's something that's very difficult for us. I mean, we start programming and we figure a few things out. We feel like a million bucks and then we run up against a brick wall and we want to spend uh, a ton of time trying to solve that problem because we never like to step away from the desk and stop what we're doing in the middle of our thought processes and all that on a bug that we're just completely stumped on. And the thing is, is like, that's why you need to kind of learn to stop on a good note. You need to know, okay, I accomplished this, this, and this. This is a good time to stop before I run up against that brick wall. Um, that's another reason why um, you want to also step away when you're pissed off. Like when you're starting to swear and cuss and like you just, you're like, I'm never going to figure this out. Uh, and you start doubting yourself. I mean, that's a good time to just go ahead and step away because you're not at your full potential at that moment. And you're going to be spinning your wheels a lot. You're going to miss the obvious. You're going to be like, oh, man, my code didn't compile because I have a semicolon there. I'm missing a curly brace. I'm missing um, a closing parenthesis or something like that. It just like there's all kinds of little things that, that we'll miss when we're really tired or when we're pissed off. And um, when you're not seeing the obvious, it's best to spend your time wisely by just uh, stepping away at that point. Um, now, another thing, too, somebody mentioned this the other night. They're like, hey, when I've been coding a lot their brain almost gets um, like fried to the point where they try to sleep at night. And this has happened to me a, a bunch of times, actually. And it, it still happens to me, uh, depending on how intense my coding session was. But when I'm done with a really intense coding session, I now find that I don't want to go straight to bed because like all I'm thinking about is the code and what I was doing, why I couldn't figure it out. Like, especially stepping away when you're pissed off. When you step away, when you're pissed off, we commonly do that. And then we go to bed because it's two o'clock in the morning and we feel like shit. We feel like shit because we're like, damn, I wasted my whole night. Couldn't figure this out. Never going to be able to get this stuff done. Um, and it's just, it's a shitty way to go to bed. So 
I find that even if I spend 20, 30 minutes, like if I'm going to read in a book, like reading out of a book will put me to sleep. But I find that I don't usually want to do that after I've been reading code. So I'll just simply put, play like video games for the most part or I'll watch YouTube or something. And, um, and then sure enough, I'll be able to fall asleep. But nothing's worse than like tossing and turning for hours on end after you've had a, like a long coding session and uh, not being able to sleep. Now, in addition to giving yourself a break physically by stepping away and getting sleep and eating and exercising, you need to give yourself a break mentally in the sense that this stuff is very, very difficult. This uh, staring at code all day and rewiring our mind to think in object-oriented principles and all this other crazy stuff that we do when we're coding day to day, it's not something that's, that comes to us naturally and it's not something that's easy and it's one of the reasons why we get paid so much money. Um, it, it takes a lot of self-sacrifice in order to, um, to, to get to where you need to be in order to be employable and to feel comfortable enough in your employment and just know that like, if you're struggling with something, pretty much all other programmers have struggled with the same thing at one time or another and uh, that it's just normal. Also, don't be afraid to quit. Like a lot of people don't know that, okay, it's okay to quit. Maybe I'm just jumping into web development and I decided to, to jump into React because everybody's talking about that. And I find React way too difficult then don't be afraid to just say, you know what, F React, I'm going with Vue, or I'm going with something else, or maybe I'm ditching web development altogether for right now, and I'm going to write some file system uh, programs to just automate some tasks, or I'm going to write some web scrapers, or maybe video games, or whatever it may be. None of this stuff is very easy, but there are times in my career where I've quit things. Like when I first jumped into uh, Perl, I, that was my first language, but I quit Perl, and I moved to Python, and I never really looked back. Um, there were times in my Python development that I originally went to Django and then I found Django to be way too difficult and I went to Web2Py and I went to a bunch of other different Python frameworks and then eventually circling back to Django. And I don't think any of that was a waste of time really. It was all just sort of a normal linear progression because everybody's different. And I'm not saying quit programming altogether, although that is your prerogative, um, but quitting certain aspects of programming and doing something else can also be a good use uh, of your time in a way to keep up uh, motivation. Also, make goals for yourself. You should always have some sort of goal. If you're trying to create a project, um, you should have some sort of end, uh, you know, end game idea on what this project is going to be and what it needs to do. Try to break that down into a list. Um, when I'm working professionally, I like to have a list uh, of tasks and um, they're always ranked in priority, especially when you're working for a business. Um, that It's always a priority order there. Uh, but having that list and having those goals, it keeps up my motivation because as I, as I, you know, surpass or meet, you know, a specific goal, I have a way of feeling good. And it just, it keeps my motivation going and also it allows me to not get so overwhelmed in the overall larger picture of coding. Uh, because sometimes when you're looking at, you know, the mass, uh, you know, the, the whole project as a whole, you can't see the forest through the trees, uh, so to speak. So, um, just, you know, having some, you know, even if they're just tiny little goals, like I need this program to connect to a database. I don't care about reading, writing up, you know, updating. I don't care about database migrations. Um, I just need this thing to connect to a database and give me a good connection. You know what I mean? That could be like a small goal if, if you have a database driven application. And again, leaving on a high note, that might be a good time to give it a break. If you've been spending a few hours looking at tutorials, how do I get my Python web app hooked to my MySQL server or something like that, you get that bitch reading that server, that might be a good time to just step away. And similar to giving yourself a break uh, mentally and just knowing that things are hard, also know that humans procrastinate. Like I procrastinate. I, um, I procrastinated on this video, to be honest with you. Uh, procrastination, I think, is a normal human trait. And it can be, a, there's tons of different things that can affect and cause procrastination. But um, procrastination and also imposter syndrome, I think are completely uh, normal human feelings and, uh, and traits. And I just think that like, you should also know that as well. And just know that like, even some of the best people are going to procrastinate here and there, and that you also should not get down on yourself about that. This is a big one. Don't compare yourself to others. Um, you should compare yourself to you and where you were three months ago, two months ago, um, however long it is like at any time I've been doing this 10 years now. And like, 
I feel like I don't code nearly as much now as I used to. Like I used to spend so much time coding, but I'm a much better programmer now and I'm still becoming a better programmer every day. And like every few months, like I can look back and be like, wow, I now know all this different stuff. And like, you just, you're going to gain knowledge. Um, and you don't know what somebody else's track record is. You don't know what their, their, uh, their, their schedule is. You don't know how, you know, how healthy they are. I mean, they, they could be coding all the time, uh, and their wife is out there cheating on them or something, or their kids hate them. You, you never know what somebody's life is like, and you don't really want to like ascribe to, to be that person. You, you just want to look up to yourself really. And, uh, and look at your personal goals that, that you're obtaining. And anyway, I just find that, you know, anytime I compare myself to other programmers or YouTubers or anything, it just doesn't lead me into like any sort of happy spot. You are who you are and it is what it is. And you just have to follow your normal progression. So really, I'm just going to wrap up this video by saying that like, if you do want to be a programmer, especially if you want to be a paid programmer, that is like a software engineer working for a company, you're going to have to push through a ton of crap that you don't want to deal with. Eventually, you're going to get your job and you're going to feel amazing because you're going to get paid a lot of money to learn how to code because that's what we all do on the job day to day. And there's going to be times, though, that we're still stumped at work and that we have tasks that are very monotonous and boring and things that don't really motivate us um, because money is not a great motivator. It actually is, is a motivator that uh, fades very quickly. I mean, for instance, as soon as you get your $100,000 a year salary, after you've had that for three or four months, like it's just not the same thing. And I think that's also an another normal human trait. But one of the great things about being a paid programmer is that we are paid to learn. And, um, and it's really the most awesome thing I've ever seen. So it doesn't really matter what your job is. I was talking to a coworker the other day and uh, his wife actually is like a biologist type where basically she looks at like human specimen like things like cells and stuff looking for certain like cancers and things like that. Uh, and I, I asked him, I was like, well, do, you know, does she like her job? He's like, yeah, yeah, she likes her job. I was like, does she ever get burned out? And he's like, oh, yeah, she get, you know, she's she's burned out a lot. I mean, he's like, she's on her feet all the time. Granted, this woman's making about 100000 a year probably, but her neck's constantly, you know, looking into a uh, microscope. And, I mean, no matter what job you have, whether it's like blue collar or white collar, um, you're going to have your ups and downs, and uh, programming is no different. But I think, honestly, and, and this is something he told me, when we were having this conversation, he's like, he's like, you know what? I mean, he's like, for as much as like we do complain about, you know, the programming industry, it's like, there are so many worse jobs out there. And there, there really is. I mean, I've been a plumber, a truck driver, an HVAC guy. Uh, I worked in stores. I, I, drew, I, I, I delivered and installed appliances around Washington, D.C. So there, there's just so many worse things that you can do. Uh, one of the great things I think also about a programmer is like, we don't have to deal with those screaming customers on the phone. We have bosses and things, and we have open offices we have to deal with, but nothing's worse than that uh, business to consumer customer service aspect of the job. That that is a pretty terrible thing. I've been there and done that. And like, anyway, I think everybody should just try your hardest, know this thing's difficult, and just uh, do your best. All right, guys, have a good night. Thank you. Bye.